Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Capture webinar. Um, thank you for joining us today. If you're either you know here on the East Coast with us, so good afternoon, or on the West Coast, good morning. My name is Emma O'Grady, and I am the marketing coordinator here at Capture Higher Ed. So today we will be talking about social media marketing. Woohoo! Um, everyone does it, so we need to learn more about it. Um, so before we get started with our webinar today, I just wanted to go over a couple housekeeping items and then I'm going to pass it off to our presenters. So what those would be is all attendees are in listen only mode, which means you'll be muted during the presentation. But that does not mean um, you have to stop engagement with us. We'd love you to ask any type of questions that you have during the presentation. So if you see on the side of your screen, the control panel, there is a section where you can actually ask questions. So please feel free to ask any and we will address those at the very end. And other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to our presenters today. Once again, thank you for attending. All right, hi everyone. My name is Jackie Weissar, and this is Laura Hagen. And we are the senior communication specialist here at Capture, and also best friends for life. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, most important. Laura and I also have dreams of doing a podcast together in the future, so this is kind of like our first hurrah. So if you could leave feedback about what you'd like to hear more of next time, that would be great. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for attending today. Um, we're gonna try to keep this at about 30 minutes, just like social media, short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start off today with a quote to kind of guide the webinar. And the quote is from Jay Bear at Convince and Convert. He says, focus on how to be social, not on how to do social. Deep. Very deep, very important. And very important, yeah. So that's kind of <clears throat> gonna be the theme today. Um, just talking about how to be social and engage with your audience, in this case, prospective students, um, and that's the way to go. So uh, so to start off, like I said, my name is Jackie Weissar. I'm a senior communication specialist here. I've been working at Capture for about four years, um, so I've really gotten to see um, the company grow, and I've worked with a large portfolio of clients on different digital display targeting, and I'll hand it over to Laura. I'm Laura Hagen. I've been here about three years. I'm also a senior comm specialist. And um, like Jackie said, we've seen things kind of grow with DDT and digital marketing. And I think we were kind of there at the beginning of the use of social media ads here for our company. And we've learned a lot along the way. Um, I also have some additional experience in social media. Um, prior to this, I do social media for a couple local businesses. So, um, just kind of using things I've learned from that as well to kind of help us along the way. Yeah, and then Laura and I, um, I we should mention, also worked at another local newspaper together um, and we're involved in some of their social media efforts in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's a little background. We're legit. Mm -hmm. We know what we're talking about. Let's Basically expert. And if you want to tweet or Facebook or anything during this um, webinar, you can use the hashtag. We love Laura and Jackie. Um, we'll be sure to be following those. Yeah, expect okay. a lot of tweets. Yes. So today's agenda. All right. So these are the things we'll be covering. Um, we're going to go over general best practices for creating social media ads in regards to both imagery and content. And then we're gonna go over the three main types of social media ads that Capture does for our partners um, and talk about them in detail and what we've le learned and how those kind of work best. Um, so again, feel free to ask any questions as we go through. And some of this may seem like um, a no-brainer, but also um, it's something you have to think about and believe it or not, we have seen some of these things come across. So um, just keep that in mind going forward. All right, we're starting off most importantly with social media, especially Facebook uh, is gonna be photos. Um, when you're writing content and putting a photo with it, obviously you wanna make sure they go together. So if you're promoting a nursing uh, program, you wanna show nurses, not an art program. Um, it's the first thing users will see, so it should be impactful and engaging. You don't really want um, kind of a cutoff picture of a kid staring at a, whiteboard or something that doesn't really tell you anything. So um, obligatory obvious statement, the image should fit with the content. Um, 
we've actually gone to a marketing conference where this discussion was part of an advertising session. So believe it or not, some people don't think about that. Um, but how do you pair images with more general content? Uh, we ask our partners to provide as many images as possible and ones that are program specific when they can. Um, images of students are gonna perform better. Um, images of buildings, they're not gonna really respond to as much unless it's a really cool shaped building or a weird shaped building. Um, and also it's important to make sure that outside images fit with the time of year. We're doing a lot of um, launches of things right now and we're not gonna show the campus in summertime necessarily because we're promoting it in December and January. So just things like that, that may not be top of mind you wanna think about when you're putting these things together. Awesome, so yeah, if you work with Capture, or hopefully you will work with Capture in the future, be sure to think about that when sending us photos. Um, you wanna send a lot of photos and as many of students doing hands-on um, things is best, and that kind of leads into the next slide. Um, so like Laura was saying, you wanna make the photos as interesting and engaging as possible. Um, and that doesn't mean that everything has to be super bold or crazy. It's about being authentic. Um, Generation Z, the students that we're communicating with now, they know when something's authentic or whether it's a stock image. Um, photos that show action tend to perform best from what we've seen. So those are two good examples um, of photos we've used for some of our partners that have performed well. Uh, photos that are too heavily edited or too perfect can be a warning to users that they're looking at an ad. And remember what I said, the quote at the beginning, we're trying to be social. We're not trying to advertise to these students. We're trying to build a relationship with them. Um, we talk to schools a lot about making ads and content not look cookie cutter and about showing in images of students on their campus um, in unique spots, you know, where you couldn't be on any other campus. So very distinctive. Um, we do have a really big issue with getting photos from, from some partners that, that really show the school. So we don't want a picture where it could be any college in the world. Um, we want to make sure that it's very distinctive to the school. And just to kind of give a shout out to my alma mater, Western Kentucky University, um, something like that. If you are familiar with the school or have gone to the school, there's the kissing bridge at the top of the hill. That's something that you're not going to necessarily see. <laughs> What's at the kissing bridge? I want to We'll know. talk about this offline. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, you're going to not necessarily see that at another school. They also have a lot of albino squirrels as a thing oh. down there. So. Something like that, you're going to want to make it identifiable and be like, oh, well, that's at Western or that's at Dayton, at University where, Dayton where I went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go Flyers. But yeah, so um, some other quick notes, you know, um, when you're communicating with a more general audience, you don't want to use an academic specific um, photo. So, for example, a science photo, because that might not relate to every student. Um, Images that show students tend to perform better, and images of female students specifically tend to perform better, which girl is pretty power. interesting. Yes, probably because girls can relate, and maybe guys are more drawn to those pictures or something. Maybe. I don't know, but those perform better. All right, so um, a lot of times we're asked about putting text on photos. Um, which is more like an advertisement. Um, when using text on social media images, you kind of have to be careful. Facebook only allows to ads to have text on about 20% of the images, and this includes your logo. So as more, as you add more text, your ad may reach fewer people. It may not deny the ad, but the performance will be affected and how often it serves will be affected. So um, these samples that are on your screen right now, that's uh, kind of low image text ads, is, according to Facebook, um, with these as a reach may be slightly impacted, but probably not by much. Generally though, we don't really use text on images anymore because we've seen those ads don't perform as well. And um, as we've already kind of referred to a couple of times, there's so much text around it, it takes away from the image, which is what's gonna draw people in in the first place, and it looks like an ad. And the idea with social advertising is to kind of fit in with the flow of the rest of what they're posting on the, on social. You don't want it to obviously be an ad or look any different or sound any different. So um, if the school is posting a lot of photos um, with their content and then you throw one in there that blatantly looks like an ad, they're going to take notice and maybe scroll on past that. So um, we try to leave text off and with the logos it just becomes um, a little redundant because we're obviously sending these through the school's Facebook page so we don't really need a logo 
um, it's already identified with the school and it just kind of takes up space and takes away from the photo. Cool. So all that said, um, we usually avoid adding text to an image for more technical reasons as well. So Facebook and Instagram offer multiple placements of ads to help you serve more impressions in more places, which is great. But what that means is that your image may be cropped to fit the placement. So you can see even in the diagram um, how different the image sizes can be. Some are more rectangular while others like Instagram ads are square. So when we use text or logos on ad images, we'll go through each placement to ensure that nothing is awkwardly cropped or missing from the image before launch. Um, but overall, that's another reason not to include text or include logos because they may get cut off in some views. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, we don't want to clutter up the available space we do have for a logo and text when the image is the most important thing. And this, I think, has been one of the biggest um, maybe learning curves or things that we have to kind of be cognizant of is it's going to be shown different sizes in different places. And you may not think about that when you're originally putting together a photo. And if you have something off to the side, you don't, you have to think about if that's gonna get cut off in a mobile version or if it's gonna get shrunk a different way. So um, that's just something that we've really learned a lot about and have paid more attention to when kind of choosing the imagery. All right, this is a sample ad from Facebook's Help Center that kind of shows all the content that goes along with a Facebook ad. So um, above the ad in the green, you have the text field container. So that's the text above the image and it has the largest character limit. So you can kind of want to put your longest bit of content up there. Um, below the image is the headline and the link description, which both have a shorter character limit and you kind of want to be short and sweet there. Uh, you can use longer text, but Facebook kind of cuts it off when it doesn't fit in. And um, as the idea is with social always to keep it kind of short and sweet, you don't want to write a paragraph down there. Um, so because of these limitations, the shorter the content, the better, um, not only for technical reasons, but your audience, Gen Z has a short attention span. Um, I think that goes outside of that though, because I feel like I have that as well. So mm -hmm. um, giving them, you want to give them the most important info in the ad before you lose them. Um, and this kind of goes to the Instagram as well, because when you, when these ads convert to Instagram, it's only going to pull the top part, that part in green. Um, that's the primary piece of content that will convert. So that's going to be your caption on your Instagram photo. So make sure it can stand alone in the image. Make sure it doesn't need to go with the headline underneath or any of that because um, that's when you're going to lose and confuse people when you get over to Instagram. So you want to convey the call to action kind of succinctly in this section here at the top. So if you're pushing students to visit or like in this example to visit the market, that's where you want to put it. Cool. So um, now we want to go over some general best practices in regard to content. Um, so first of all, tone and voice. In general, use the tone that best fits the rest of your social media. So the idea is to keep the ad from looking too markety and make it as authentic as possible. Um, so don't be gimmicky. Stay true to your institution's normal voice. Um, if you're usually posting fun, quirky content, make your ads fun and quirky. If you do use a more academic or formal tone, stick with that. Um, so overall, the idea is to be very consistent in regard to your social media voice. Um, but also, don't be afraid to change your voice. Don't be afraid to try something new and start to make all of your ads um, a little bit more funky so that you seem more authentic. Um, Something else in regard to this CTA, the call to action, um, in the past, um, when we first started posting social media ads, we would always include a button. So we would always select a call to action button like learn more or apply for admission um, or register now. We have primarily stopped doing that because we've seen that it cuts off the text at the bottom when you have a button. And from analyzing a lot of social media ads, we've seen that one's that don't include a button actually have better click rates. So we, we, we think the reason is because Gen Z knows. They know what to do and how to interact with an ad. They don't need that extra button there all the time to tell them to click. So that's kind of something, a takeaway we've learned that we wanted to share. Um, last point, um, 
using hashtags, uh, that's something that we're trying to do more for our partners. So we're going to our partner's social media pages, looking at the Facebook ads they've already done and when they use hashtags. So it might be your university name and then a U, for example. But we're trying to use those and ones that the schools use a lot in our own um, Facebook ads that we produce for them. So using hashtags is a really good practice. Um, and then in regards to topics and audience, social media ads involving specific events, like at a fall open house, and social media ads specifically for a yield audience tend to perform better. So when I say yield audience, I mean students who have already applied for admission and just need to be kept engaged or just need to submit a deposit or take some specific action. So those kind of two specific groups we've seen do especially well and respond especially well to social media content. And they're already interacting with your admissions page or with your Facebook pages. So um, the idea with these ads is you want to make you don't want to make it obvious that someone out of the ordinary is writing these. You don't want it to look like, oh, well, someone stepped in and wrote this very official ad for um, an event coming up. So you want to kind of keep that voice the same throughout. All right, now we're going to talk about the types of social ads. Get excited. Um, first up, there's, da -da -da, da -da -da. there's three main types we're going to go through. We're going to go through prospecting, retargeting, and email targeting. Um, prospecting, the goal for these is to find new prospects. Most of the audience you're going to be targeting are people who are probably not familiar with your institution. Um, these ads are kind of more informational since if they've not, learned much about you yet or they've maybe only heard of you, um, it's kind of to let them get to know you a little bit more. They're going to be informational, um, more of a general branding or learn more message. Um, quick fact, there are 20, 214 million Facebook users in the U.S., millions of people on Facebook. So make sure when you're setting your audience, you're zeroing in on the areas you really want to target. Now we'll kind of show you how we do this. Um, Say that you are in an, a college here in Louisville, Kentucky, and you are having trouble reaching students in your nearby area. So you say, I want to do this general branding or learn more campaign, and I want to target everybody within a 25 mile reach of Louisville. So that's this is where we can kind of narrow that down. We can also narrow it by age if you're looking for more male or female applicants. We can target by gender. Um, and we can include zip codes, cities, states, all of that. And this is done through Facebook Business Manager. So the screenshots we're showing you are, are from that. Um, an example of something that I did recently from a school, um, we work with a school in New Jersey, and we set up ads to go to students within a 75 mile radius of the school and they wanted it to be students who might be interested in their graduate programs so i chose ages 23 to 33. so that's kind of an example from a partner that we worked with recently so building an audience for prospecting is a little more involved than with the other types of social media ads we're going to talk about um, just as we said because it's the people you're trying to reach out to are unknown to you but what you do know is what you want so you can kind of tell us what you want to target and we can um, choose that accordingly. Uh, where we're targeting and email targeting emails kind of cons or audiences consist of people kind of you already know about. These are all brand new. So you can create audiences based on interests, demographic info, instead of behavior and known info. You can also create a lookalike audience based on data you have from, for example, last year's admitted students or applied students um, and say, and it pulls everyone um, with similar qualities and demographics and serves to them. Um, next up, the detailed targeting section is kind of where the magic happens. This is where you can put all the information about the people you're looking for. So you can say if you're interested in equine studies, if you're interested in hands-on learning, if you're interested in um, Boy Scouts or Girl, Girl Scouts. Scouts. Yeah, nature, exactly. Or yeah, nearly really anything. Yeah, <laughs> anything a user can like on Facebook can be used as an interest when building an audience. So the more interest you put in, the narrow and more targeted the audience becomes. So something we've learned is that once you pick your audience, you're probably going to have to narrow it down a little more so it's not going over to a million, 
to over a million people. Um, that's going to let your money go further and your reach go further if you can narrow it down because it's really only showing the ones that you definitely want to see it. Okay, um, so here are some examples. So because the audience for these ads may not be familiar with your institution, like Laura said, it's best to go with a softer call to action here. So instead of pushing students directly to fill out a request information form or apply for admission, a CTA of Learn More gives the user a place to go without seeming pushy. Um, so remember, these are mostly going to be informational ads, so try to resist the urge to sell these users. And as you can see with these, it's gonna have that little sponsored uh, blurb underneath the school name. So they're, go they're gonna know kind of automatically that this is a little bit more than your regular posts. Mm -hmm. Next up is retargeting. Uh, retargeting ads are displayed to social media users who have been to your website. So say for example, you go to a school's website and leave. Um, ads are then served to you on any other site you go on as long as the ads um, are available to show there. They have, depending on the spots, you usually see them kind of at the top or on the sides, um, but they're gonna be served to you when you're on your social media accounts. They already know who you are, but may not know everything they need to make their decision. So you can kind of run retargeting off any page on your website that has a tracking pixel, either through Facebook or a third party like AdRoll. So, so an example that you guys might see in your everyday life, um, say that you are shopping for shoes. Mm -hmm. So you are on Dillard's site and you are shopping for shoes. So Dillard's might have a pixel code um, on the back end of their website. So you think about the shoes, you forget about them, and then you go to CNN, and when you're on CNN's site at the top, there might be a banner ad um, that's retargeting you and trying to get you to go back to Dillard's site. So it works the same way from schools. It's something that you see all the time, but might not know the back end of how it works. And it's something that works really well for our schools because we're trying to get them back to our website. And then we can also use our CBE product to identify them. So it's really important to get them to keep coming back to the site. Um, and the audience for retargeting campaigns, uh, as we said, is usually kind of prospects who haven't yet become inquiries in your CRM. Um, and this is going to let us know when we get them back to this site, give us more of a chance, like she said, to identify them, to learn more about them, what status they're in, and then target other information to them based on that. Here's some examples of retargeting ads. Again, they'll, they'll, you'll see they kind of look the same as, as the rest of them, but um, it's going to be engaging and it's going to drive you to go back to the site to learn more about something else or to complete an action such as um, visit or meet with a counselor. Cool. And then the last type of social media um, ads are email targeting ads. So based on the email address already in your CRM for the student, social media sites can find the users associated with those addresses and display ads to them. So basically, to put it simply, the device knows when the person using it um, has a specific email address tied to that student's account and then can serve them ads. So the most important thing with this to know is that you can be very specific with the ads. You have their email address, you know who the student is, and you know where they are and what status they're in, so you can convey much more specific messages to them. Um, so email targeting, for example, is usually where we um, ask students to inquire, where we ask students to apply for admission, where we ask them to submit um, an enrollment deposit, where we ask them to enroll for classes. Um, and email targeting can be used for purchase lists as well, but since there are several other options for targeting prospects, um, we're just gonna kinda go over yeah apps and yield. Yeah, we'll just go over apps and yield. Yeah. So um, those are two examples of email targeting ads. You'll see the first one there is more effective because it has a specific apply now message. So you know who your students are you're targeting and you're sending them a very strong call to action based on that. Yeah, does that cover it, Laura? I think so. Yeah, so we went over, just to kind of summarize, we went over best practices in regard to imagery and content, some major things we've learned, 
Um, and then the specific types of ads. So uh, let's see if we have any questions. Yeah, no, coming back, uh, first of all, I just want to say I was really feeling the hashtag Laura and Jackie love during this <laughs> webinar. And once you all get your podcast up and running, I'd love to be a guest star one day. So Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for uh, running through social media marketing with us. Now, we do have a couple of questions today from our audience. And the first one I will go ahead and ask is Does social media advertising do better than other types of advertising that a university might add for their for their marketing yeah yep. um right now a lot of our digital display advertising is done in banner ads um the little banner ads you'll see on kind of any site you any other site you go to social is going to pop up only on facebook and instagram mm -hmm. and we know everybody and their moms and their grandmas and everyone is all on social media right now. So you're just by the number of people who can see it and have access to it alone is going to do better. But also the mark, the market that we're targeting um, specifically for these colleges and universities is going to, that's where they are. So that's definitely something we've noticed is doing a lot better um, than just the regular banner ads because it's kind of easy to click over a banner ad or scroll past and these are a little bit more in your face or in your day to day. Yeah, and we've consistently seen that. We've looked at um, campaigns for a diverse array of clients, um, small schools, big schools, and no matter what, their social media ads are the ones that well outperform other types of digital display targeting in most cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we essentially know that for your marketing strategy, social media is definitely going to be a plus in it. Um, and on to the next question. So we do have a question that asks about different types of social media and specifically Instagram versus Facebook. And Instagram has become an extremely popular medium, especially in the last couple of years. So this question actually asks, uh, it says that we have used an all platform ad and we received more click throughs for Facebook than for Instagram. And this audience member was just wondering if one medium is better over another one, specifically in comparison to impressions over clicks. Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, so with, Facebook, a lot of people are getting on Facebook on their desktop. So it's going to be better for clicks because you can easily open another tab, another window, that kind of thing. Instagram is going to be definitely better for impressions because I don't know about you all, but I sit there and scroll through Instagram all day. And I'm not going to click on something that takes me out of Instagram or onto another page. Um, it's becoming a little bit different now that you can kind of, add stories and you can swipe up to get to a page and mm -hmm. that's a little bit different but um for the for the bank for your buck for clicks you're going to want to do facebook and impressions you're going to want to do instagram it's mm -hmm. and i think that's going to stay that way until um just because of where you can get to it you can't nobody's going to be looking at instagram on their desktop so right. it's not as easy to click away to something else and come back to it which doesn't mean it's not valuable. Students are still seeing it and looking at it and that creates a brand awareness, mm -hmm. but they might not click. I feel like I never click on Instagram ads, but right. I do stop and read them. Right, same. Yeah. And it just depends on what your end goal is. If it is brand awareness, Instagram is the way to go because it's gonna get in front of them a lot because um, that's where everybody is these days. Um, but Facebook, that is gonna get more clicks because that's where people are more active and doing more actions based on kind of just looking and liking. Great answer. Thanks. Nice. And I practiced it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's that's the thing too is you know these are extremely popular social media sites, um, so it's always nice to get some of that background knowledge on them all specifically, um, and especially the difference between different ones like Instagram, which might be for a younger generation, uh, Gen Z specifically, versus something like Facebook, where people of all generations are using. Mm -hmm. um, so we are actually getting to the top of the hour now, and we want to be respectful of your all's time. This is Emma again, the moderator, and I just want to say thank you all so much for attending today. I'm going to let our presenters 
hashtag Laura and Jackie. <laughs> finish it up today. And, uh, once again, thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening. Um, just remember that social media advertising is a very fluid process where you'll keep learning and discovering new things. And it's why we call our schools partners because we learn together as social media progresses. So, um, we'll be sending out these slides along with the recording after this webinar. So you can listen to it again and again and next week and send it to your parents and yes. everyone, you know, and my parents and Jackie's parents. <laughs> yes. Everyone. Yes. Um, so we'll be sending it out and feel free um, to respond to that and let us know if you have any questions at all. We love talking about social media. Yes, we do. And we'll definitely, I mean, this isn't the last you'll hear of this. It's, it's always changing and growing. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely going to have more to learn and more to share kind of as we are able to test more and do more on our end. Um, and we will be available to sign autographs for anyone who's interested at the Resolve Conference um, that Capture is putting on January 16th and 17th here in Louisville. Be there. Please sign up if you haven't already. Yeah, and if anyone wants to know about the Kissing Bridge at WKU, feel free to uh, <laughs> send a message individually, and we will answer that question for you. Mm -hmm. But once again, thank you for joining us today, and have a wonderful afternoon. Bye. Bye. Or morning. <laughs>